All right, thank you all so much for joining us today for our G Suite Basic to Google Workspace Upgrade Options webinar. Uh, my name is Kelly, for those of you who I don't know, and I work with Highview, and I will be facilitating the session today. I'm pleased to be joined by Jacobo from our customer engineering team who will be leading the dem demo portion of our webinar today. All right, and uh, please feel free to leave any questions in the chat. Just a heads up, we will be answering those at the end. So a bit about Highview for those of you who may not be familiar. Um, so we are a Google Cloud Premier partner. And so this means that Google has certified us to provide both the license vendor um, responsibilities as well as support and other services for Google's range of products. So on the next slide, you'll see um, a summary of these products that we offer. Um, so in addition to Google Workspace, previously called G Suite, we also do offer services for Google Cloud Platform, which is similar to Azure or AWS, Google Voice, which is Google's voice over IP solution, and Chrome Enterprise for Chromebook management. So if you're interested in moving to a Google partner, if you haven't already, or if you have any questions, want to move forward with any of these products, please feel free to send us an email to hello at highviewsolutions.com. And with that, happy to turn it over to Jacobo. Thank you, Kelly. And hi, everyone. Thank you for attending. All right, so we're gonna just take a look at, at a brief intro on what's happening with uh, the G Suite basic and the transition to Google Workspace. Uh, so we're gonna focus on business editions, uh, quick demo on the key features for the business family now, and also enterprise editions plus a uh, demo. And Q&A please, uh, just remember questions uh, are gonna be left at the end. All right, so let's jump and in. And Jacobo, to... actually, before we start the demo session, um, I noticed that um, Christine, uh, you joined from, from Google. Um, do you want to just briefly introduce yourself and um, and what you do? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Kelly. Um, so yeah, I'm just a sales manager um, with our Google Workspace team. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm here to support Highview and if you guys have any, happen to have any questions as well. All right, thank you so much. Back Sorry about that, Maybe you can go ahead, Hakobo. All right, thank you, Christine, no problem. All right, so probably many of you here have ever like wanted to get uh, or track down missing files in Google Drive, take a look at the activity, uh, what's going on with uh, sharing permissions on your uh, files and, and folders maybe. And that's uh, currently not available in, in your uh, G Suite Basic Edition likely. So if you go to reporting, then you wouldn't find an advanced audit log, which we'll look into in just a few minutes. And that's available through Business Standard, which is one of the uh, new Workspace Editions. Um, probably wanted to create a, a company drive instead of having just uh, users sharing drive files from their My Drive account. So that gives you more uh, security and then you have more controls over company drives. And, and if a user leaves, then you can of course just uh, assign somebody else to that company drive or share drive to manage them instead of having to transfer files, right? And also monitor spoofing and spam attacks, which is a nice security feature added to uh, those are in enterprise editions, which we'll see in a moment. All right, and jumping into what you currently have and the comparison charts for the uh, editions. So G Suite Basic, Workspace Business Standard and Business Plus. Um, you may already know what you actually have, but if you don't really, uh, or if you haven't really uh, digged into it in the admin console, then you can see admin features here. and. We are going to send this slide after uh, the webinar, so uh, don't worry about reading through all of them. And I'll, I'll just focus on those highlighted ones, which are the ones that I'm going to be demoing for Business Standard and Plus. Yeah, and, and just something to, to highlight there. So you'll notice for the business editions, um, Business Standard and Business Plus, uh, those are available to all customers under 300 users. So if you have over 300, um, then we'll be talking about the, the enterprise editions shortly. All right, thank you, Kelly. All right, so with Business Standard, you get all the G Suite basic features 
uh, plus the following. So you're going to have uh, two terabytes of uh, storage. That's uh, pooled storage. So if you have um, 80 user accounts, then you're going to have just double of that for the entire company. So that's shared across all users. So if somebody's using more and somebody else is using just less, then that compensates for, for that usage. Um, and then you have shared drives. So we're going to jump into taking a look at shared drives. So those are the company drives. And then you'll find uh, that located in the admin console. So there are two um, aspects of shared drives. So you're going to have just the uh, my drive, which will be here. So if we go to drive as usual, then you would normally just see my drive, right? And then you're going to have just your, your folders. So this has ownership and you can see owner here. And then that's going to list who the owner is. So if you're not the owner, then that's going to just list somebody else's name here. Uh, in shared drives, which are the company drives, then um, you can create them as simple as right clicking on it and then create a, a new shared drive. If the administrator has actually allowed that for the organization, otherwise that has to be done by the admin. But um, going back into just shared drives, you can see that we have uh, this company drive and then you have users listed here. So those are the members. You can assign um, roles and permissions. So it's no longer just editor or viewer. You actually have a sense of management. So you have a manager. A manager would be able to manage all the content, manage other members and settings for that specific shared drive. So it's like having a super admin for those company drives. Then you have uh, content managers. Those are only able to add, edit, move, and delete files. So they can not really manage settings or add any other members to shared drives. And then continues to contributor. They can only add or edit files, but they cannot delete them. They cannot add anyone else and so on. Commenter and viewer, which is pretty self-explanatory. And additional settings so you can prevent uh, people from accessing or adding files if they're not within the organization um, and also preventing that viewers and commenters can create a, a, a just download a copy print it or just copy files so and as you can see this one has a, there's no permission to change settings so that can be controlled within the admin console which we'll see in a moment so going back to the admin console, you can find uh, shared drive settings and management options under apps. And you're going to go to workspace. Then you'll find uh, drive and docs. And you have a uh, separate section. So you have sharing settings, migration settings, and manage shared drives, which gives you the list. So sharing permissions for shared drives, you're going to expand that same section that you would normally expand for my drive, but you're going to have listed at the bottom shared drive creation settings. So you can tweak a couple of more settings like who can create shared drives in the company. If users are allowed to have files uh, shared outside of, of the organization, if people who is not a member can actually add files and so on. So that can be prevented here. And you can tweak the settings as well by organizational units here. So if that does not, really necessarily have to be applied to everyone. You may just want to have like contractors only affected by those strict settings. And Jacobo, can you add external users to a company shared drive? Yes, yes, you can. You can actually add external users and you can give them just the uh, basic role permissions like uh, viewer or commenter. So that'll, that'll work. All right, and so going back to uh, settings for drive, then we can also see migration settings. So if this is uh, that your account has just been uh, upgraded to business standard or plus, this is available since uh, starting on business standard. So you can have users migrate their my drive documents. So if they are just a company owned documents and then they should be just in a shared drive because they could either leave or they are going to be terminated. Hopefully not, but that can happen. So you can easily just have them uh, put those files in the shared drive and then later on just assign somebody else. And um, you have to click this. So allow users to migrate files to shared drives. So that lets them just drag and drop from my drive into their shared drives. 
it's a very simple process. Or they can just select the folders, move as usual, and then move the folders to short drives. All right. Okay, and then finally we have managed short drives, which is pretty awesome for admins. So instead of going to my drive and going through the list of uh, shared drives, which you would probably not have if you haven't been added to them, then you can find them here. So you can find and this and filter them. So you're going to see just the names. Um, you can see what's the status, if it's active, date created, uh, the creator name. So if it wasn't really you as an admin and you've given the option to all the users to create drives, then you can see who, who was the creator. Uh, storage used and the item cap. So item cap, this is uh, important. Although there's no storage capacity, maximum storage capacity, there is actually a file count uh, cap. So it's 400,000 files and folders, but it's pretty high. So I don't foresee anyone really hitting that limit. But if, if you do, then you have to split those files into two separate shared drives only. Yeah, and Jacobo, the, the shared drives the shared drives data, that does not count against your your company storage limit, right? That's right. That's right. OK, and so we can see manage members. So let's say you just want to have somebody else add it because uh, a user left the company or was terminated, then uh, that person or that user account was just uh, deleted. Then you have to add somebody else as either a manager, maybe, so you can just quickly add that in here and specify, all right, this is going to be the manager. And if you just uh, don't know which, maybe which shared drives don't have a manager and you wanted to add some managers to them, you can filter by no managers. So with that, you can easily find all shared drives with no managers and then just assign somebody who's going to take care of that instead of you being the admin, always trying to take care of all, all those. Um, workflows and pretty simple. So this is where you can allow managers to modify shared drive settings. If you disable this, then they wouldn't be able to change any settings, even if they're managers. So it's an additional security layer on top of having just a manager switching all the settings for you. All right. And right, so you can actually uh, restore shared drives. So if by mistake, somebody just deleted something or intentionally, you can still restore this. And it's the same uh, principle as restoring a user data. So you have up to 25 days, which is the uh, Google's uh, retention policy by default for, for those documents. And you can select the date range here if there's a specific date range that you want to target. All right, that is for shared drives. Now we're going to move into advanced drive audit log which you can find under reporting. So under reporting, you're going to head over to audit and then you'll see drive. So under drive, you can see the entire activity of all files, folders, and shared drives. So you're going to see just the uh, title for that document. You can see the, the event description. So what, what's happening. So we can see G Suite admin just viewed an item, the user name, date, event, so you can see that's uh, just a view event. You can see edit events and so on. This was moved, create uh, the document ID. So if you wanted to just filter out probably by that document because it's, it, it contains uh, sensitive information, you could do filters as well. So we could say uh, documents ID and then just filter out by document ID. And that's going to leave us only that. It may take a moment. It's just going through the entire log. So we'll give it a moment. Should be there any minutes. Oh, and by the way, this only uh, retains the last six months worth of logs. So keep that in mind if you're looking for something that happened a year ago, then you're not going to be able to find that. All right, 
should be there. There we are. Okay. So we can see just uh, this actual document being filtered out. So we can see that it has been modified by the G Suite admin only account. There are some changes that have been made. So you can see what's the prior visibility for that file. Then it was switched to anyone with the link within the audience. So if that's a security uh, risk for your company, then you can just uh, go ahead and contact that user account and tell them that they have to change that setting or tweak the settings only for that account. And then that should take care of it. Um, and you can see what's the IP address as well. So with that in mind, if you have a document that you're just uh, trying to audit or, or just monitor, you can create a an alert so a reporting alert will help any time that a change happens to to this document that will be sent to the alert center and then you can also get an email sent out to all super admins so whomever is uh, working at that time when the event happens they can just uh, take care of that so you could give it a name like the document name maybe like or something like sensitive and then you can have recipients that would be internal email accounts only. So we can create that and that'll go back to the alert center. So I'm just gonna show you how that looks really quick here. So alert center, that's in here, alerts. Now, if the um, rule has actually triggered, you're gonna see that here listed. If it hasn't, then you can just go to manage alerts and emails just to check that the alert has been created properly. So you can see that in here, custom reporting alert. It is active, it's sending notifications, it's on, and it's a, a rule type, it's reporting. Dates that, that it was modified, and if you don't no longer need it, then you can just delete that from the reporting rule section. All right, and if you're not really comfortable working with uh, that UI, you can always export the entire log. So you can go back to reporting, drive, and there's an export option. So we can select all columns and then export this to a Google Sheet. So that'll open up in the tasks. And you would just get the entire log here and you can just filter out as normal in Sheets. So. There we have it. Um, oh, it's still loading. All right, there we are. So let's say you just want to filter it out by delete the event and you just want to see what's going on, then you can quickly do that instead of just using the, the UI in the admin console. All right, and I think that should be it for advanced audit log. Um, we're going to move on to uh, business plus. So. What I've mentioned is uh, actually found in Business Standard and all editions above. And we're now going to move into Business Plus key features. So for Business Plus, we actually have um, Windows Device Management. So Windows Device Management, if you have PCs and you need to have some sort of uh, authentication mechanism because they're just using a local password, you can have that um, Windows Management setup and it's the Google Credential Provider for Windows. So it's just a one-time install, and we'll find that under Devices. Mobile and Endpoints, Settings, and you'll see Windows Settings. So this works like an Active Directory. Instead of having just an Active Directory, you can switch to this online Active Directory from the Workspace Admin Console. So this would be your source of truth for authentication instead. And uh, this is the credential provider for Windows. You have to download it, install it on each computer, or you may have just the software to push other software into it. So that's it. You just have the MSI installer. You have to uh, specify what, the, what are the permitted domains. If you have more than one, then you can add the secondary domains in here. Now that is going to uh, give you a different login screen in Windows. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that demo to show you because I, otherwise my uh, well, my computer would crash, but um, it just looks like a uh, normal Google Workspace login screen. 
So instead of using just a local password and local user, then you can see just a Windows login screen now with your Workspace account. And it even works offline. So if you go offline, you can turn on offline access here for, for user accounts who are traveling maybe or have uh, connectivity issues with their computer. Uh, there's Windows management setup, account settings. So you can specify if they should have admin privileges, like maybe I, the IT team should have administrator, local administrator control on those computers. You can switch that. So that would be enabled. And then you can switch that to local admins and select the IT team sub working here to give them ad, IT um, local admin access. Um, you can control Windows update settings. Let me just uh, exit out here. Sorry, cancel. So Windows update settings, you can force install updates for user accounts and even specify active hours. So if that device shouldn't be updated during active hours, then that's just gonna work afterwards. And here are all the settings. So it's not configured, you can enable it and then specify uh, notify before uh, downloading, auto install, auto install and restart or force restart. And bit locker settings as well. One second, let me just cancel out here. Bit locker settings, so for encryption and custom settings. So you can even tweak uh, your device. You can block applications, you can install applications from the admin console. So there's a 7-zip uh, install that was uh, pushed from here. And all you need is just uh, an XML file which is uh, provided by Google in a support article, which is uh, very thorough. You can follow through the instructions and it's pretty simple. Or you can uh, just ask us to uh, give you just a quick demo later on. All right, so that's Windows management. Uh, and next we have Google Vault for archiving. So um, that is the archiving solution by Google and that's gonna let you retain data. So if, if you have a retention policy that you are um, obligated or that, that you have by law, then you can use Google Vault to set up a retention policy, either indefinitely or seven years, five years, depending on what the, um, what the uh, obligation is for your company. And we can find Vault in here, application launcher Vault. And although this is on by default, retentions are not set yet. You have to consult your legal team and check what's the retention that you should set. So you'll see uh, three different sections, retention, matters, and reports. So retentions where you're gonna see the retention policies for all services. And our test account is set to indefinitely. So anything that's deleted by an account will still be stored in vault. So you can always find it. And that goes as well for drive, um, Google Groups, chat, and you can turn on that for meetings, uh, recordings as well, insights. Hey, Jacobo, yep. what are some of the more common reasons that customers like to use Vault? Um, most commonly, it's just a, probably trying to find an email that was deleted and they have like a, a legal Voicemail regarding matter. the... Sorry, Paul. I apologize, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, no problem. So yeah, yeah, you have like a situation where a user left and they just deleted everything. And you just can't really find it. It's been over 25 days. You can no longer restore that uh, from the admin console, but you can still find it in the vault. So if it's like an important message that was sent, then you can still find it in here. And um, I, I think mainly it, that's mainly it, but well, yeah, one, it's just for, for legal purposes. Hi, Miles. Yeah, Kobo, one thing to add there, um, for any organizations that operate in regulated spaces like healthcare, or if you're working with any like, like government entities, many times they'll have data retention requirements and Google Vault would allow you to comply with those requirements. All right, thanks, Miles. Yep. And then if you want to find something, then you can just create a matter, which is essentially like a label. And you would say, uh, eight, and then you wanted to uh, probably check anything that's been uh, sent. 
this will leave you uh, let you just use specific accounts or search by all accounts or specific organizational units as well so i will just use uh, this account all right and we can specify start date and end date or just leave empty and you can use terms to search so we'll use just calendar to see what's happening here so if you wanted to search for maybe a calendar event or something a notification that was sent you could do that looks like there's nothing here but uh we'll go back um here so um I'm wondering if that account is actually empty. Welcome should work, I guess. Yeah, there we are. So we found just an email with the welcome text. So you can just use any type of search terms as well. Uh, and there are, there are some specific search terms for this. So you can use deleted. If this is just a, a deleted message, you can search for that, all right? And uh, this will also let you, uh, Google Workspace Business Plus gives you the ability to add archive user licenses. So if you need to retain data for a user who leaves and, and you just want to retain it, if you delete that account, the data is actually purged out of Vault. You need to keep that account either active or suspended to retain data in Vault. So if you are looking into having just that account suspended, archive user licenses are a reduced price and you can keep them uh, as long as you need them. All right, and that's for business, uh, the business family. We're gonna now look into the workspace enterprise standard and then enterprise standard plus. Let me just uh, switch over to here. And we'll see, uh, you got everything again for GC basic, so all, all core features. And now um, storage, by the way, storage in Business Plus is also five terabytes, and you also get that on the enterprise family. So five terabytes of storage, again, it's uh, uh, pooled storage, so it gets shared across the entire organization. And for admin features, you get um, the iOS data protection and so on. I get uh, DLP policies. And for Enterprise Plus, you get additional security features, which, which are very important for uh, enterprise companies. And then you have um, investigation tools. So that gives you the ability to uh, act on or action on certain events. So if there's a phishing attempt or if there's malware that's been received, you can go ahead and delete those messages. Um, context aware access, which is uh, a geofence and you can block access for apps within the admin console if it meets certain criteria, which we'll see in a moment. S-MIME encryption, which gives you enhanced encryption for email, and security sandbox, which will help you uh, take care of any type of malware. Right. And yeah, and Jacobo, these additions also include all of those Business Plus features as well. Correct. Right? That's right. Thank you for that, Kelly. And let's move into the... Um, demo so let me just leave this all right there we are so we're going to be looking into uh, data loss prevention so with data loss prevention you can automate uh, blocking documents if they are being shared outside of the the organization so instead of looking at the report and asking people to change settings, you can prevent that from even from happening. So we'll go to uh, security, I'm sorry, rules. And then we'll see data protection in here. So you can create a rule here and you'll find data protection. You can start with just a blank uh, data protection rule, or we can go ahead and just, uh, just a template if you are not yet familiar with the um, conditions. So we'll click on templates and you'll find, let's say, uh, financial information. It's it's the most common sensitive information. So you, you don't want anyone sharing like a credit card number or bank account number outside with anyone, right? So we can click on that. That's going to be uh, 
populated. And you're going to have name and scope, apps and conditions, and actions. So in name and scope, just give it a descriptive name. Uh, just uh, add a description for that. And then you will have the scope. So this is where you're going to target either the entire organization or you can use just selective orgs. So you could find include only uh, certain organizational units, for instance, like accounting or contractors and so on. So you could specify that, hit done. I'm not going to select that right now, but let's hit continue. And then you'll find apps and conditions. So you'll see uh, this is drive only. For Gmail, you'll find that under the Gmail settings, but drive. So you're going to have, this is going to, if any of the following actually matches, that's what the or means. So you'll have all the conditions. You see that's global credit card number, bank account, and so on. And it's set to very high. It'll happen if a minimum unique match happens and a minimum match count is only one as well. So if there's just one incident, then that will trigger. And we go to continue where you can see what the action is. So the default one is block external sharing. So if somebody's just trying to share that uh, document or spreadsheet with a list of credit card numbers or bank accounts, then that will be completely blocked. And you're gonna get as well an alert. And depending on how you treat this, you can specify this as a medium or high incident. So you can set it to high and send a notification to all admins. And just like that, you have just automated the process of blocking documents if they contain, uh, they contain sensitive data. Now, if we go to the alert center, you can see that. Let me just get back here. All right, alerts. And you'll find that data loss prevention rule, which was triggered back in June. Um, you can click on that and see what the uh, document looks like and what was that triggered it. So you'll find the document ID and uh, the document here. So you can view the document here if you actually have access. Otherwise, you can just use the uh, investigation tool, which we'll see in a moment. So here, you can find what the document looks like. If that was just a false positive, maybe, then you can just check the settings and see what happened. All right, so moving on to investigation tool, then this is a very good uh, feature in Enterprise Plus. And as mentioned, you can take actions on certain um, events. So that's under security. And then you find the investigation tool here. So investigate and take action to resolve security issues. That is here. So you can search. You have multiple data sources. So you can go by calendar log events, chat log events, device log events, devices, Drive, and Gmail. So you can, uh, let's go to Gmail and we'll add a condition. So this works based on conditions. You can see attributes. You have plenty of attributes to work with here. So you can see attachment extension, attachment hash, uh, malware family, and so on. And you may have just a from address that you want to target, or we can just do uh, one simple one right now with maybe spam, spam classification. And you may just want to target any spam. I don't believe we have any spam in this test account but we'll take a look. So uh, you can select is or is not, and then the actual spam classification here. So it's clean, malware, phishing, spam, and suspicious. Let's see what it returns. All right, looks like we have nothing. So let's do clean. And that should bring up plenty of messages. All right, so there you have it. Now let's pretend this is spam just for the demo. And you can find that here, you can see what the message ID is. So if you wanna do just an email log search maybe and, and see what the route was, if you have like a, a content compliance rule that should have taken care of that or spam, then you can see what happened. Maybe there was just a, a separate route. And uh, subject, the event, so it was just received, header, uh, envelope, 
and additional details here. So what's the domain name, uh, attachment hash, attachment name, and so on. IP address. So it, it's very useful when it, it comes to uh, investigating just a security breach or a security issue. Now, if you want to take action on this, then you can select either one or multiple messages and you'll see actions here. So that's going to give you multiple actions to work with. Uh, you can view the header, delete messages, mark messages as phishing, spam. You can restore messages if they have been actually uh, deleted or trashed. Send messages to inbox. So if a user is telling you that they can't really find a message, you do see an email log search that the message was delivered to the inbox or it was just probably archived by a filter. You can just send it to the inbox for them very quickly. And send messages to the quarantine. So you can send that to a, an admin quarantine as well. All right, and you can also search for uh, drive documents, but um, for the time being, I'm just gonna move over to context aware access. And that again, is very useful when it comes to having people working remotely or just for security, maybe um, you already have just a verification, but this gives you just an extra layer of security on top of just a verification. So uh, that's again under security. And then we'll find here, context aware access. So you can use either device uh, management policies or uh, geographic origin as well. So let's just create a new one. Oh, by the way, so you have access levels and then you have to assign those access levels to the services. And there's just a user message section. So we already have four, but let's just uh, take a look at this. So you give it a name, you can use uh, basic or advanced. I would go for basic now, and then you can use either N or OR. So if you wanna target multiple and they have to match all of them or just uh, one of them, you can use OR. So, uh, you add a, an attribute, so it meets if meet attributes that will, that will will trigger, and you have the following IP subnet, geographic origin. So you could select um, just a country. Maybe you just want to lock this down to the U.S. only. So if anybody is trying to sign into your, one of your accounts and uh, you notice that, you can just block that from happening here. So you can quickly lock it down to a geographic origin. Or you can have just an IP subnet mask. So if you have an office and everyone is just working in the office, then that'll also apply. You can just specify that network here. And if they are outside of the office, they wouldn't be able to access those services. Now that would look like this. If you go to assign access levels and you have, again, the same structure so you can target either the entire organization or just sub orgs. Uh, looks like we have some um, employees working in Europe. So you could just block that maybe and assign levels. You'll see that is either applied or not applied. So we don't have any, any rules applied and all you do is select them and then assign. You'll see all the access levels that you have. So you can either uh, select one or more and that will target desktop and mobile applications as well. The message that a user will see when the attributes are met, then would look like this. So they will be just prompted to uh, this message. You do not have access and then you can either give them instructions on how to co contact you. There, all right. All right, now SMIME encryption. So this is really good. Um, you may be required to have enhanced, en enhanced encryption from some companies, or if you're working with the government, as Miles mentioned. Um, so with enhanced encryption, you can go to uh, apps, Gmail, or we can just quickly search for that. So it's SMIME, it's S forward slash. And that's gonna take us to user settings and at the bottom you'll find SMIME encryption. So this is a bit more advanced because you have to uh, create a certificate, upload the certificate to the admin console and also share a uh, certificate with your user accounts. Or you can do that via API, but again, that's more advanced. So you could just uh, send the certificate to the users and they have to upload it. 
in Gmail, which will look like the following. So if you push this via API, users are not gonna notice that that's happened. But if you just send the certificate, then they have to go to settings and they can upload it on their own. So accounts and under send mail as, you'll see your primary email address. This can be edited, so you can click on edit info. And then you're gonna see a new section here, which says enhanced encryption as mine. And you can use the certificate, so you can upload it. Uh, this is good through May 27th, uh, 2022. And you can also upload a different certificate. How this works is that you send an email to a recipient to which you want to have enhanced encryption. And then when they reply back to you, the keys are shared. So encryption is now enhanced now from now on. So when you compose a message, you can specify what the uh, email address is. And right now this one isn't really working because I haven't uh, used it, but you'll see message security. This padlock will turn green. Right now it's only showing uh, standard encryption, but you can click on that and see if you already have enhanced encryption or not. So if you don't have, then uh, you may have not yet communicated with that contact and you can create separate rules for that so if you don't want to have all messages with enhanced encryption you can just specify uh, content compliance rules targeting certain subjects or certain uh, content in the body of the message all right and security sandbox so for security sandbox we'll have that here um security sandbox which is on under apps workspace settings for gmail and spam phishing and malware so we're just going to use that shortcuts and we have security sandbox here so this will let you enable a virtual execution of attachments in a sandbox environment so before they are delivered the Attachment will be executed to check if that's an actual uh, uh, attachment or if it contains any type of malware that could potentially harm your users. And you can turn this on for everyone or you can use selective sandbox security rules here. So you can configure that. It'll give you a uh, content compliance uh, type of pop-up window so you can target inbound or both internals receiving as well. Come up with your expressions if you want to just target specific emails, maybe just, uh, I don't know, um, Excel files maybe, or something that contains a specific subject. And then that will just run the security sandbox here. And you have additional options as well. So you can target specific or bypass it even. And that that is it for enterprise key features as well. Um, right. Um, I think that's it for the demo for now. And um, Kelly, would you mind? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thanks so much, Jacobo. So um, a couple things to keep in mind. So Google has announced that in late January 2022, um, all G Suite basic customers without a commitment plan, so if you're on a flex month to month plan, um, will be automatically transitioned to Workspace Business Starter if they are under that 300 license threshold. Um, this will be the same retail price, um, $6 per user per month, um, but there will be three features lost, advanced mobile device management, custom drive templates, and chat controls. However, you will gain access to any features that Google releases in the future since G Suite is, is currently deprecated. And on the 300 and up license side, any of those customers will be automatically transitioned to Workspace Enterprise Standard. Um, standard pricing for this is quite a bit higher at $20 per license per month. So we do recommend reaching out to us um, prior to late January if you'd like to hear about any, any discounting options since Google is offering some pretty deep 
This counts for those moving from the G Suite editions. Um, note that you won't lose any features in this case, but you will gain more storage and some advanced security features. Um, so again, feel free to, to reach out to us to inquire about discounts um, prior to that transition. And I also want to note that for customers with a commitment plan, so if you are on a contract that's not ending till after January 2022, that contract will continue to be honored. Um, you won't see um, any changes unless you would like to make that transition early. Um, otherwise, we will be revisiting that upon the conclusion of your contract. Um, any, any questions about, about this? While, while we're on this slide, feel free to leave them in the chat or, or unmute yourself if you prefer. All right, um, and C Christine, from the Google perspective, anything, anything I'm missing here um, with regard to, to timeline or anything else that should be highlighted? No, you pretty much covered it, Kelly. So thank you for that. All right. So um, yeah, next we'd we'd move on to to a Q and A. Any questions about about these features? Uh, no, I think it was all good. And Hakobo always, I mean, he does a good job. He's a magician uh, with any issues that we get, and I think he covered most of that uh, again. So it was good. Thank you so much. All right. Thank fantastic. You, thank you, AJ. Yeah, Hakobo's, Hakobo's the guy. Um, so yeah, it looks like Hakobo, we do have a question in the chat. How does the sandbox feature work? Do you want to maybe summarize that again? Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, Paul, hang on, let me just uh, go back to that. So it's just a uh, sandbox, just a virtual execution. So it'll open the actual attachment. So if you turn it on before the message is delivered, it'll remain in uh, just like a pause state on that virtual execution until it's uh, evaluated. And if it's safe to deliver, then that message is going to go through. So you may see some um, delivery uh, delays, maybe like a minute or two. So you, you may get that reported by users. So all attachments are going to be evaluated. That's why you may want to just go for uh, selective using security sandbox rules. So once the uh, attachment is scanned and uh, executed, it gets delivered. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Can I just ask where the 300 user limit was announced? Because I obviously missed the boat on that, and that's going to hurt. <laughs> Um, Got it. Yeah, I think that that might be more of a, a Google question. Christina, looks like you're jumping yeah. in there. I believe there should have been communication out, but um, let me um, confirm internally on our end, and then um, I'll get back. I'll get your contact information, um, oh. Nelly. Okay. And then I, Kelly, yeah, sorry, I have a quick question. So for people that weren't able to attend, you guys are going to host this on your YouTube channel, correct? This recording? That's right, yes. Okay. All right. Um, any other other feature questions? Questions about this transition with Workspace? All right. If that's all, I think we can conclude. So look out for an email from me. It'll have the comparison charts that we showed today, as well as the recording, in case there's anyone you need to forward it to. Otherwise, feel free to reach out to hello at highviewsolutions.com if you've got any questions. And yeah, thank you all for making the time. Thank Thanks, you. everyone.